Kristen, would you mind just coming right up here to the very front? Are you okay with that? I just want us to pray for you. We're not going to touch you. So this is Kristen. Kristen is the armor bearer for my friend Karen. So what that means is, is that she travels every day to go up and take care of Karen and make sure that her needs are getting met and the hospital's doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Um, so she doesn't like a lot of people around her so that she doesn't carry things back to her friend and just being safe and cautious. But do you mind like putting your right hand forward for her? We're just going to bless her, Father God. We just bless her from the tips of her toes to the top of her head, Father God, that you just continue to provide strength, wisdom, all that she love, patience, endurance, Father God, all that she needs, Lord, to do the task that you've set before her, this wonderful, excruciatingly beautiful task that she has that probably takes everything that she has to do um, over these last couple months, Father. So we just want to let her know that we are always thinking of her as well and that we love her, Lord. So we ask you to fill her up, Lord, touch her with your love, your joy, your Holy Spirit, Father God your strength, your energy. Give her all that she needs. Give her provision in this time, Father. Just pour blessings, blessings, blessings out over her and over her family for all that she does. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. And we thank you, Christine, for all that you did. <laughs> yeah. That's a hard, it's a hard task. So good morning, everyone. Welcome to the holiday season. Hi. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, we're right there. Listen, we started off. Y'all were a little, well, lethargic, I'll say, right? Um, difficult, right? Listen, the enemy is filthy, okay? And he's always trying to divert us. He's always trying to hinder us. He's always trying to thwart our worship. Listen, I told him today, we're small but mighty. We're small but mighty. Our praise still goes up. It's still effective, okay, in all that we do. Um, but I feel like I'm, I'm worshiping God, trying to get the plane off the ground. <laughs> Come on, here we go. Um, because God is good. This is the wonderful, wonderful holiday season um, where we celebrate the Savior, the birth of our Savior, Christ the King. Um, so we just want God to bless you, Lord. So as you give, just know that God will bless you. He always blesses. That's what he does. He's a good giver. Um, you guys are good givers, so we thank you. We want to bless this um, church. We want to bless our neighborhood. As Ben talked about, we want to bless our homes, bless our people, and all that we can. So we thank you, Lord, for your goodness and grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. So good morning, good morning, good morning. Say hello to some people around you. Hello. 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 Hey, Deborah. Hi, honey. How are you doing? Good to see you. Bless Bob Bass. Bless Bob Bass. That's what I'm talking about. You should come over here and the worship with me sometime, okay? I need some of you with me over here. Um, anyway, so good morning. We're talking about Kingdom Come. Kingdom Come, getting ready for the holiday season. Desiree went through some of our announcements, but... Um, Really, Christmas Eve is my favorite night. It's, it just makes me want to weep when I think of it. It's so beautiful here. If you've never been, you should come. It's at 7 o'clock. Lasts about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Um, but just a really nice way to kind of kick off your holiday. It's very quiet. It's like intimate. Um, we have beautiful music, and we just kind of fellowship and celebrate with each other the season. It's just a lovely, lovely evening. So I do hope you'll come. Okay, clicking the button. I have all the power. Kingdom come. Kingdom come. Kingdom come. Listen, you should just say that over and over again. Let it resonate in you. Kingdom come. Kingdom come. Kingdom come. So uh, I started off, this has actually been a series, if y'all didn't know, but I'm going to connect dots for you right now to tell you um, my whole thought process with this. So I started Kingdom come. Let me just, let's do the verse first. Okay. So, Matthew 4, 17, from that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So, I started off, so this word has been in me since about June. I'm going to tell you, where's Jim Riffle? There he is. Um, how, he, he gave it to me back in June. Um, he started talking about the kingdom is here. 
right? Was that the theme yes. of the men's retreat? Yes, it was. Kingdom is here. Kingdom is here. Um, so you guys went to men's retreat. Or we still have guys here who went on the men's retreat. Yes, there you go. Kingdom is here. Um, then um, we had Pastor Pat come and spoke the beginning of October and brought the same message still, bring, carrying on kingdom is here. Um, then I came and I did the woman at the well. And you're probably thinking, how does that have to do with kingdom come? Has everything to do with kingdom come? Has everything to do with kingdom come? Um, we talked about, you know, when she came that, that day for this divine appointment that she had with the Savior, she was a little edgy, a little attitude -y, a little pissed off at the world, you know, a little upset about her plight in life, um, those kinds of things. And within a matter of moments with Jesus, she was transformed. Transformed, filled with joy before she walked away from him. Changed her whole life. Filled with joy. She left there leaping with joy. So good about who God was and who he was in her life and how he felt about her. That that joy, got, she ran and got, got around to her people, to her town. Actually, the people who didn't even care for her, who kind of oppressed her. Her joy was so great that it ignited in them. Okay? And they came to know Jesus. Because of this one encounter with the, with the woman at the well and Jesus. Um, and so then from there, we talked about a changed city. Okay, and what a changed city would look like. How she, she helped transform a whole city. And then, um, and then they came to Jesus and then they were transformed. And we talked about um, our transformation and us being changed and learning to love as the Good Samaritan loved. Like being so full of God that that's how you now go out and love other people, okay? Uh -huh. The way the Good Samaritan loved the person on the side of the road. Like went above and beyond taking care of that individual. And I said, here, that's, we are, we got that. We got in the space. You mean we are really good at loving our people. Um, at least I believe that's how y'all loved on me for over a year when I lived in that house, went above and beyond. We try to go above and beyond to making sure our people are loved and stable and ready to go back out into the world now and have a good life Amen. and maybe help someone else Amen. in the process. Amen. So we talked about being influencers, mm -hmm. being change influencers for our city and what that looks like and how to be a good citizen. And even when we're being persecuted to still love those people. Okay, that's the change that we talked about. Okay, so where am I going? Then we, then we shared a meal as a community of believers. Right, we had communion. We said the Lord's Prayer together as a community. So I'm talking about kingdom. The kingdom is come. The kingdom is come. Repent for the kingdom is at hand. Repent for the kingdom is at hand. So, let's start kind of at the beginning. So to understand kingdom come, and I feel like all of, once I put this together for you, you're going to be like, oh yeah, of course. Um, king, kingdoms, let's talk about kingdoms. Okay, kingdoms first off are um, areas or territories that are uh, overseen by a king or a queen or both could be called pharaohs, could be called Caesars, they have other names, um, but usually they're the one in charge of a territory or an area. So whatever they decide goes to that whole area. They make the laws, they make the rules, they determine what's good and bad, what's right and wrong. They dictate over that whole area. It's called their kingdom. Um, so in Genesis, God and his wonderful, he's a wonderful artist and a great craftsman and a wonderful designer. And he designed this whole wonderful creation for us called Earth. Okay? And then he asked us to be in charge, to kind of oversee it, to kind of look after it. Okay? Um, he created this whole great design for us to come in and now and now live and fellowship. So we did, we've come in, we've created like communities villages, cities, countries, um, with what God has given us. So we kind of created rules, laws, 
um, in the beginning, usually with the guidance of God. You know what I mean? Him guiding us with what, what is going to be best for us, what's going to work best for us, what's going to keep us safe, what's going to be fatal to us. Do you know what I mean? So he laid it out on the way we should kind of live here on this planet. Um, I always say it's like if he designed a car, like this wonderful, fabulous car, and it's going to let us use it, and he gave us an owner's manual. Now, if you would like optimal performance out of this car, you'll need to read the owner's manual Amen. to learn how to take care of this car, what it can do and can't do. You'll need to read the owner's manual. Well, somewhere along the way, you know, the owner's manual gets lost. It's up in a shelf somewhere. Nobody knows where it is. <laughs> um, so then we got to kind of decide, well, we're supposed to do the oil change thing a while ago. I didn't. Um, and it still seems fine. Seems good. So I'm not going to really worry about that right now. Um, I'm not really supposed to take it off-road, but, you know, we had a little fun the other night. I took it off-road a little bit. Um, so, so kind of things like that if you think about it. Um, but we kind of set up systems um, for justice, uh, for laws, those, those kinds of things. Um, even the Hebrew people who were like God's chosen people, um, because they had a love for God. So God kind of had chosen the Hebrew people to be his people because they were still listening to what God was saying. They were still trying to follow what God wanted to do and how he wanted the plan to go. Um, and then somewhere along the way, they decided there are some things about it they didn't really like. And then they decided, well, there's some things that needed added to. Do you know what I mean? Um, and so that's, that's kind of the system that they created. Um, I also had another analogy of what we've done with the planet is it's sort of like if you go to work for let's say you go to work for Bob's sailboat shop okay you go to work for Bob's sailboat shop Bob owns, Bob's the owner he owns the sailboat shop so he knows how he likes things to go and he tells you how he wants things to go. Eventually, you work your way up at Bob's Sailboat Shop, and you become a shift manager, which means you don't really need a lot of oversight anymore, and you're kind of in charge when Bob's away. So you kind of run the store how, how it's supposed to go. Well, eventually, you start thinking that, you know, I'm here a lot. I'm here more than Bob. I really like Bob. And, and you know, <laughs> maybe I don't want to drop the money in the bank after the shift. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? You just start deciding that you think you know better than Bob on how Bob's store should be run because you because you got answers. Yeah. So eventually you're gonna get fired. <laughs> Bob's gonna come back and he's gonna be mad. Um, now this <laughs> this is kind of like what's happened with us. Do you know what I mean? God has kind of put us in charge to run the planet, do you know what I mean? Um, and we've not done so well. Would you agree? Yep. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, so in our world now, we have systems in place, systems like the strongest win. That's true story. The strongest survive. Um, the richest have the most advantages. Would you agree? The richest have the most advantages. Beautiful people have an easier life, right? This is kind of the system of the world today, right? This is kind of the strongest win, right? The richest have the most advantage. Where's the poor people? Forgotten. Bless. Bless. And the world I'm talking about, the people are forgotten. The poor people are forgotten, but you're right, Lawrence. Um, the meek are walked on, right? The sick are outcast, looked down upon, like there's something wrong with you, okay? This is really kind of the world we live in. Would you agree? Like, what, not maybe in here, but once you walk out that door. Once you walk out that door, that's kind of the kingdom that we live in right now. The poor are forgotten, the weak are stepped over, um, the, the sick are looked down upon. Okay, so let's take a little step back to first century, to the first century um, in Jesus' time, when Jesus was here. 
So during the first century, Rome ruled the world, okay? Or so they thought, do you know what I mean? They, it was their empire, right? Rome ruled. Rome uh, was, was run by Caesar and what's called the Senate, okay? But Caesar ultimately made the decisions. So Rome conquered Israel, they took over Israel, and what they would do is they would go into these territories in these countries and they would take over, but they wouldn't, um, they wouldn't make the people leave. You know what I mean? They kind of leave the place the way it is, at least they did with Israel. We'll let it stay the way that it is as long as you keep order. We don't want any revolutions. We don't want anyone going into revolt. Um, we want peace and calm. And so they would let the Jews stay there as long as they didn't start any trouble, okay? This is kind of how it's set up. Romans were first-class citizens, which means that it would be really hard pressed to accuse them of doing any wrong, okay? Jews could not. Jews could not. In the Jewish system, there were the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the priests. Those would be your high-ranking officials. Okay, they're the people who kept order, who ran things, who made sure people were following the laws, that people were um, upholding the traditions. That's where they were. Everybody else under that was lower class. Your fishermen, your tradesmen, all of them were lower class. And they had to answer to the Pharisees and Sadducees. Except you could also work for Rome. And you could be a tax collector, which meant you had a little more status now, a little more income but you were despised by the Jews because you now work for the, it'd be like if Putin came over here and took over, we would not like the people who decided to work for Putin, right? That's what it was like. So they were despised. They were hated by the Jews, anybody who was on Rome's side. So they're looking for, you know, all along they're looking for a king to come and set them free to set up a throne and change this whole system, okay? That's what they're kind of looking for. So here comes Jesus on the scene, and Jesus comes on the scene saying, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Um, I mean, we're, in, we're in Matthew, but in, like in Mark, I think it talks about kingdom of God. It's the same kind of thing. Um, kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So to the, um, to the Jews, this really makes no sense. Repent. So first off, let me just say, one of the reasons that I even I wanted to do this with you guys is because I feel like what Jesus did is such a big deal and so explosive that sometimes I think we're, we miss it a little bit um, on what actually happened um, with Jesus. And I think the kingdom of heaven is one of Jesus' main messages. He says, he talks about the kingdom of heaven about 45 times in the book of Matthew. Wow. Matthew is mostly about 30 pages in most Bibles. 30 pages. So he's mentioning kingdom almost every page. So you think, what? What? <laughs> What is the big deal? Why do you keep talking about this? Why do you keep talking about this? And first off, he starts off with repent. Um, so Jesus comes around and he's just saying these ridiculous things. That people are like, what are you talking about? And why are you talking about this? Um, and he's saying repent. So to them, they're like, why, should, why would we repent? What are you saying right now? So let's look at what it actually means. What is he actually saying? Because he's saying to he wants you to stop. He wants them to stop. Something is happening. Stop. Something is happening. You're going to need to reevaluate everything up to this point. You're going to need to reevaluate everything you saw and felt up to this point. Okay? That's what he's saying. Repent. Repent is metanoia. Metanoia. Greek. Um, it's Greek and it refers to. A change of mind, a thought, or thinking so powerful that it changes your life or changes your way of life. Stop a way, a, a new way of thinking that changes your whole life. 
Okay, it's going to change your whole life. So he's not just saying repent or turn. He's asking you to reevaluate everything that you've thought in such a way that it's now going to turn you. It's now going to turn you. It's now going to turn you into a different direction. Um, you know, and I'm bringing this now because Charles Dickens got this point. Christmas Carol. The Christmas Carol. That's what he's talking about. The man was so changed. Changed his whole way of life by the end of the story. Changed his whole way of life by the end of the story. Um, Aerosmith sings about it. Amazing Grace. I once was blind. Now I see. This is what Jesus is talking about. I remember when we had revival here. And I, we had prayer in the morning, and I came up one morning for prayer, and I was right here, right in this spot. And something happened to me, and I began to weep, and I weeped for the whole hour that I was here. God was changing me. He was changing me. Yes. He was changing me. Hallelujah. He was changing my thoughts, my ideas, my Glory. attitudes. He was changing me. From that moment on, I have been different. The kingdom come. All right. Come on. The kingdom come. Come on. This is what he's talking about. Such a change. And a lot of us in recovery, we know this. It's called the gift of desperation. When you get the gift of desperation, it makes you start reevaluating everything that you thought, everything that you believed. You know what I mean? It'll make you be like, okay, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I've been doing it wrong this whole time. That's what he's saying. He's saying repent because, listen, a new kingdom is here. Yeah. There is a new kingdom here, oh, wow. and you're going to need to see it from this vantage point. Oh, right. You're not going to see it over there, okay? Because he's going to say ridiculous things, <laughs> like, love your neighbor. Listen, in America, we're not really good at this, okay? <clears throat> some of us in the churches are, some nonprofits have this, but we're not really good at loving our neighbor as ourselves. Do you know what I mean? I'm leaving a little upset with my neighbors right now. Uh -oh. Just gonna tell you, my real physical neighbors. <laughs> but this is a ridiculous saying. If you don't come from this kingdom place, love your enemies, love the people who are hurting you, love the Romans, that's what he's saying to them. They're like, have you lost your mind? They don't even follow God. He's saying love. You're, you can only understand this stuff. That's why trying to fight the Bible with your friends that don't know Jesus, you're wasting your time. It doesn't make sense unless you live in the kingdom. All right. Unless you live in the kingdom yes. is the only way. This stuff is going to make sense to That's you. That's right. Because he's so, listen, do you think of the woman at the well, how changed she was. Went back and helped the very people who were oppressing her. So changed by his love. Because once you're filled with that love and you can see that view, it's all good. You can't hurt me. You know what I mean? I can be sad and those kinds of things, but you can't really hurt me. I mean, no matter what you say about me, I know who I am. I live in a different kingdom. You know, I live in this crazy upside down kingdom. If you're not getting it still, think of the program, Surrender to Win. Yeah. All right. you got to surrender to win. Of course, if you don't live in this kingdom, that makes no sense to you. But if you are over here on our side, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Of course I need to surrender to win. I was fighting myself. Yep. I was fighting myself and losing. Why would I not surrender and surrender to something good? Do you know what I mean? Surrender to the kingdom of God. Yeah. He's so good. His amazing grace, his love has set me free. Yeah, his amazing grace, his love has set me free. Anyway, so sometimes these things, they just make no sense to the world. So, okay. Heaven and earth. Two separate spheres. Heaven and earth. Two separate spheres. So, so God is always with us now, but this is how, how we started out. God in heaven, he created this lovely earth. Okay. So, he promised. He made a promise. To anyone, really, who would listen, but, but he gave the promise to the Jews. 
He said, a child is going to be born. I'm going to create a supernatural design. A child who will change the whole world. A child who will change the whole system. Okay? A child who will create everything new. Everything different. He's going to usher in salvation for everyone. He's going to have mercy and justice on people. It's going to be a whole new way of life. A whole new system. He's going to bring in freedom. Love. Peace. Joy. All of these things. That's what he's trying to do is to get heaven to earth, right? We need heaven to come to earth is what we're talking about. So Luke 2, my favorite verse. These are my favorite verses, and, this is, and you're going to see why. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Oh, here it comes. Like, listen, here it comes. Here it comes. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Here it comes, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. You'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a an manger. And then suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of the heavenly host. Listen, because they know. Listen, they know. <laughs> Heaven just invaded earth. They know what just happened. Do you know what I mean? So significant. I mean, it should have been like an explosion. Do you know what I mean? What just happened on the earth is heaven just came to earth. Amen. That's what happened. Heaven just came to earth. Glory. And suddenly there was the heavenly host praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest. Listen, and on earth, peace, goodwill to men now. Peace and goodwill to men. Heaven just invaded the earth. Heaven just invaded the earth. That's a, that's a wow. I'm sorry, guys, but that is a wow. That's a wow. That's a wow. So this is what happened. Do you know what I mean? But if you're, if you're not repenting, you're not changing, you're not looking for it, you missed it. All right. A lot of people missed it. Listen, that's why I love Christmas Eve service. Because, listen, that, that night is so holy. Do you know what I mean? The thing that never had happened before, never had happened before, happened. Jesus invaded earth. Yes. Right there. See, that's the J. He invaded earth. And you can say, well, it still sucks here. It's not going well. Right? Still got problems. Still got sick people. Still got troubles. But, listen, it started. Kingdom come. Kingdom come. It started. Kingdom come. The kingdom has, the heaven has just invaded the kingdom. Yep. <clears throat> okay. I'm not going to get through all this today. But we're going to finish it on our Christmas service. Um, because I want to tell you, listen, I want you to know the ability and the power that you have uh -huh. now. Because of this moment. Because of this, kingdom come. Oh, kingdom come. All right. But it's not just here now, okay? It's here. And then it's going to be here. Do you mean and it's going to go out? And it's going to go out because of us. So we've got to do our job. Mm -hmm. Because heaven is invading the earth through you. You're now going to push that heaven further and further into the earth. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that on, on our Christmas Sunday service. So I think they're coming back up now. But anyway, stand up with me, if you would. So listen, God is so good. God is so good. Let's just give him praise. Give him praise. Just give him a clap. Give him a clap. Just know, everything has changed. Everything is good. Everything is good. It really is good. You got to get over here to see it. You got to get over here. Kingdom come. Kingdom come. I live in heaven. I want heaven to go out. And we're going to talk about that. So I thank you, Father God, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, that this is such a good word. Such a good word. Such a good word. Kingdom come. Kingdom come. Kingdom come. It's what's going to change the earth. It's what's going to change the earth. It's what's going to help the sick and suffering. It's what's going to help the addict. It's what's going to help the brokenhearted. It's what's going to help the lost. It's what's going to set the captives free. Hallelujah. So we thank you, Lord, that your kingdom has come. 
Help us, Father, to see the light, to walk this out, and to celebrate your birth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.